So welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello, I am Kimberly K. LaBou, CEO and publisher, uh, founder of LaBou Publishing Enterprise. Welcome to another session of the LPE Author Chat series, uh, where we interview self-published authors who have agreed to come on and share their journey of self-publishing in hopes that they may inspire others to take the leap of faith to publish their own masterpiece as well. So guys, I am super, super excited today about our guest. Now I could read you his whole bio, but then we would not even have time for the show. <laughs> <laughs> so I am going to just tell you a little bit about him. He is just that amazing. I will tell you that he is a motivational speaker, a celebrity stylist, the image and branding expert. He has a clothing line, the Keith Harley collection, which is fabulous. He also has Keith Harley products. He has DK products for men. He also has his awesome step up to level up movement, which if you don't know about it, you better, better know, right? Get to know. Okay. But he is soon to be the published author of the book, Step Up your current situation is not your final destination and the list just goes on and on folks so welcome to the lpe author chat series dr keith harley how are you hey 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 how are you kimberly how are you doing honey i am amazing how are you <laughs> feeling let me tell you i don't know <laughs> what this is that's going around yeah uh but i refuse to let it keep me down any longer this is crazy. I have never wow. been this sick. But you know what? We're going to keep it moving. We gonna Bounce keep back. It moving. Bounce complain. back. Bounce back, right? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Well, I'm glad to hear that you are on the mend and things are starting to get a little bit better for you. We made Thank it. You. You're here. So I'm, I'm yes. so excited. Yes, so let's just jump right in because I want to maximize every bit of this time so that they can see all of your awesomeness, right? Oh. So I mentioned that you are writing your book, Step Up. Yes. So first, I want you to tell us a little bit about your journey. Like who is Keith Harley for those who don't know? And then tell us how you arrived at this conclusion that it was finally time for you to write your book. Wow. Um, <laughs> um, I originally am from Greensboro, North Carolina, but I was brought up and reared in the Washington, D.C. area, a graduate of uh, Duke Ellington, the School of the Arts. And um, I've always loved, you know, fashion and beauty, helping people look good. I used to watch my grandmother. Her name was Emma Bell Jameson. <laughs> and um, I used to watch her get dressed and she used to wear the fabulous hats to church and um, she used to wear the nice dresses and everything. And I was infatuated with the way that she looked mm -hmm. and the way she dressed and she took her time. And um, she was a housekeeper actually for a doctor in North Carolina. And some of the things I learned was from watching her. Mm -hmm. um, and as I'm writing my book, I started thinking about all of these things. All these things she did, just watching her, because one day she took me to work with her and I started, you know, watching her, how she set the tables and, you know, she, because my mom would send me down there for the summertime mm -hmm. and um, she would, it, it, I was just blown away. Then after she worked from Monday through Saturday, she would get ready, get up at four o'clock in the morning. Now, I don't know if you all are familiar with this. She would get up at four o'clock in the morning and she would start getting ready for church. Can you believe that? <laughs> yes. And on um, Sunday mornings, she would first put on the meal of the day, which was what we were gonna eat when we got out of church. So it was mm -hmm. always two meats. It was either beef oh. and chicken or something, right? Wow. Or pork. Um, and then what she would do after she would put on the meal oh. for the day, she would actually, this is crazy, she would fry chicken, make rice and gravy, and homemade rolls for us. That was me and my brother's breakfast on Sunday mornings. Wow. Now, here's the crazy thing. She would get mad at us while she was in the choir stand and looking at us sleep. When you eat all that food, don't yes. you want to go to sleep? 
<laughs> so we could never understand why uh, she would get mad at us. But all of these things I learned from her. And then, you know, as life went on, you know, I came to D.C. and uh, got into the arts and uh, started doing hair, uh, went from doing hair to going back to school and becoming a trichologist, which is a hair and scalp specialist, mm -hmm. and uh, opened up a hair and scalp clinic, you know, fast forward here in the Washington metropolitan area. And I'm happy to say I've been doing this for 35 years. Wow. 35 wow. years. Yeah, yeah. That is yeah. awesome. 35 years. That's a long time to do that's anything. That's a long time. So that's you really are an expert. <laughs> yeah, that's a long time. I've seen it all. Wow. So, so how did you, um, you know, come to that conclusion that it was finally time to write a book about this journey that you've been on? Um, I think what hit me was the, uh, I would, a lot of people didn't have a life like I did. You know, my, my mom was a single parent. Mm -hmm. uh, my dad left when I was three. Um, and uh, there were some experiences that I had mm -hmm. as a child. And uh, a lot of those experiences uh, created the man who I was. Mm -hmm. There was some good and there was some bad. And so what I had to do as I got older was I had to figure out how could I fix the bad and keep the good and make the good better. Right. And uh, that, was, that was a process because I didn't know what was right or wrong. I had to learn all over again. I had to go to therapy. I had to hang, uh, you know, elevate myself to hang around certain people. Mm -hmm. And I had the privilege and I've been blessed to hang around celebrities. And um, I've, I've worked with the Obama administration. I've worked with um, uh, Michael Jackson. I've worked with Jesse Jackson. I've worked with all types of celebrities. Um, and by watching them, and learning from just my regular everyday clients who are just as much as a celebrity as everybody else because they pee and bleed just like everybody else do, <laughs> right? Absolutely. So I had to, I learned from watching my clients, you know, uh, what their lives were like. And sometimes you would ask yourself, why wasn't my life like that? You know, <laughs> why weren't my parents like that? Why weren't my family like that? Yeah. You know, why, what, what, what is the missing piece to the puzzle. Mm -hmm. And that's what I had to go through, unfortunately. So yes. I had to learn the hard way. And um, when I got through it later on in life at the age of, of 40 something, wow. I realized that I had a story to tell yes. that where you come from is not where you have to stay. Yeah. And where you are is not your final destination. If you want something better, you can do better. You just have to acknowledge what it is. You just have to peel back the wounds, take off the Band-Aid and heal them. Yes. And once you heal them and you have a complete understanding, then it's much easier to change and move forward. Now, here's the other key point. You got to watch who you go and get advice from. Oh, yes. You so got true. So many people ask the wrong people for advice for change. Yes. Stop asking people who haven't done what you've done. Stop asking people who aren't going where you're going. Stop putting people on a pedestal that don't deserve a stepping stone. Right? Wow. Wow. Amen to that. I want to clap. We're always, you were always looking clap. for permission. We're always yeah. looking for permission. And mm -hmm. it's because of those insecurities of when we were a child that um, we decide, we want people's opinion and we want their love and we want them to like us. Validation. Because they think, yeah, they want validation. Mm -hmm. and, and what happens is they give you validation, but for their own reasons. Yes. Because they want to keep you at a certain place. Mm -hmm. It makes them feel good that you're behind them, aside, beside them, or somewhere back of here. Yeah. yeah. But then when you begin to elevate yourself and move up and come from behind the curtain and from beside the stage, yes, that's when you start ruffling some feathers. Oh, yes. <laughs> I know all about ruffling those feathers. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> ruffling myself. Exactly. Uh, 
So how long has it taken you from, from the moment you decided, I want to write a book? Like how long did it take you before you actually began to start the writing journey? You want me to be honest? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. I've been on this journey for about five years. Wow. And every time I pick it up to finish it, mm -hmm. I have to relive, relive a moment that I put in a box. Yeah. And when you have to take it out of the box mm -hmm. and relive it to write about it, yeah. it does something to your mental capacity. Yeah. Yeah. And so what you have to do is you have to forgive yourself all over again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you have to say to yourself, okay, you've made your choices. You've done the work. Mm -hmm. You're just going back there to see where you've come from. Yes. Not to go back there to stay. Yeah. And that's what you got to go through in the process of the writing. Mm -hmm. You know, to go back there just for a hot second, just to see where you came from. Mm -hmm. And then once you come from that hot second, mm -hmm. write it down. And whatever you've been through, somebody needs to hear about because they're going through it too. Yes. Okay. So you just walked all into my next question. And all. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. But before I ask the next question, because I want to talk to you more about that, um, I want to share a, a little excerpt from your book. And I know you didn't know that I was going to do that, <laughs> but it's okay. It's okay. I'm okay. okay. Wait, 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 wait. Get you your tissue. Sweat? <laughs> you see the sweat when you said that? You so funny. <laughs> okay. okay. So in your book, you wrote, you know, just you were just talking about the whole thing about going through, you know, seeing the therapist and, and, and doing all that. So in the book you wrote about her, she told me I was not a mistake, but I was a blessing. And what I'd been through, had I had to accept and it was time to rebirth myself. It was time that I confronted my fears head on and moved beyond where I was stuck in my life. She made me realize it was not a choice what happened to me. Um, I was a child. I didn't understand. And those things that happened to me were not my choice. It was someone else's. I was just the victim. But at this point in my life, I could no longer be the victim. I had to become the victor. I had to become the man I was supposed to be. And I had to make a change. Then you said, this was a long process and not an easy one, but I did it. And then lastly, you said, when you center yourself around people that inspire you to do better, inspire you to be better, and inspire you to level up, you have no other choice but to address your fears, confront your past, and work on becoming a better you. Like, who can't get excited about that, right? So yeah. you know that um, you, you know how excited I was when I read that because I reached out to you and I told you how powerful that I thought that whole thing was. And the reason that I was so excited about it was because you were sharing the process, right? You were sharing the process. And people need to understand that overnight success is a theory. If that whole overnight success theory is a fraud. That's what I mean to say. It's a fraud. Um, you've been able to become highly successful now, but somewhere along the way, like you just talked about, you stopped to do the work. So now you're sharing from a space of wholeness and not of brokenness. Would you agree with that? Yes. And you know, you, you, <laughs> uh oh, <laughs> I got you. <laughs> wow. That's all right. When you read it back to me, mm. it's, um, you know, I, again, this is yes. what I go through writing because you are reminding me of who that little boy was, mm. you know? And uh, when I sit here and I think about the work I had to go through and yeah. all the mistakes I had to make, all mm. of the bad relationships, mm. all of the bad friendships, all of the bullying, mm. you know? I knew that I had something in me, but yeah. because I knew I had it in me and people saw it, they tried to break me down. Yes. And um, 
when I hear you read it, because I've never heard anybody yeah. read it, ah. it's like, wow, this is, yeah. you know, it's, yeah. like, it's like heavy and, and it makes me relive it again. Mm -hmm. It makes me relive it again because I knew there was m something more. I used to take, her name is Dr. Woods. I just talked to her the other day. And um, she said, I told, I used to bring magazines to her. And I used to show her pictures of who I wanted to be, wow. where I wanted to live, where I wanted to go, um, the successes that I wanted. Mm -hmm. And she looked at me and she said, you're waiting for permission. Wow. And I said, what do you mean? She said, you're waiting for me to tell you that it's okay for you to be everything that you're pointing out in these magazines because of your past. And she hit her hand on the table. And I talk about this in the book yeah. real hard. And she I jumped and she said, I give you permission. Wow. I don't want you ask any more for anybody else's permission to do what you need to do, be who you want to be. It is none of your business what other people think about you. Yes. And at that very moment, I was, I felt free mm -hmm. because yes. I didn't know that. I did. That's how your condition, your mind is conditioned. You, 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 you to think that you're, you're, you're trained to be a people pleaser and walk in fear and be afraid. You, you're afraid to be who you want to be. Right. Because based on other people. Mm. And so when I, again, when I hear you <laughs> read that, yeah. this is heavy. And that's why it's so hard to yeah. write this book. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know you've been pushing through though. So I'm, you know, oh, I'm yeah. so grateful, oh, yeah. um, oh, yeah. you know, and to be your your publisher and to get to see you walk through that process and and still push through to get there. You know, I I know what that feels like from when I wrote wrote my first book. Um, and I think I even shared with you that when I was done, I I, I wanted to just put it under the mattress because, <laughs> you know, that's that's just how it makes you feel. It's like, oh my gosh. Right. So um. You know, so that's that's one of the things that I was gonna, you know, ask you about as far as that emotional roller coaster that it takes you on when you're sharing things that um, expose like who you are and who have made you, you know, the person that you are today, the things that you've lived through. So first, tell us um, why you decided to open up and let people into that space and see that vulnerability that, you know, of that being in that space. <coughs> And then um, you've already shared with us kind of what it's like as a writer to walk through that, the emotional side of that. So why did you decide to open up and share that part um, of your journey with your community? Because you, you've had the followers for years. So why now? Why open up about it? Because I was living a fake life. Mm -hmm. I wasn't, I wasn't um, authentic. Yeah. It, you know, they saw this smiling <laughs> face. And they saw this person that was always happy, but underneath I was in pain. Mm -hmm. um, I was lonely. Mm -hmm. um, I was um, not really happy because I didn't know what happiness really was. I just, you know, when you go through what I've been through, you go into a way of, you go into an area of pretending. Yeah. And um, so you sit up there and you try to act like Mm -hmm. and fake it till you make it kind of sort of thing. Yeah. But then what happens is that fake it till you make it stuff kind of wears out and then the real you comes out and then people are looking at you, wait, they're like, wait a minute, I don't know this Keith. You know, yeah. you're, you, you, you don't seem that man that I thought you were. Mm -hmm. And so uh, when I decided to confront this and say, look, if I live in my truth mm -hmm. and uh I, I, I speak vocally about my past and my experiences, I will feel free. That weight on my shoulder, you know how we walk that around like this? Yeah. That weight is lifted and I'm able to stand taller and I'm able to walk with my shoulders up and my chest out. And I can speak with conviction with what I've been through 
and not be concerned about what others think about it right? because they are judgmental. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you something. Most people are judgmental and see your faults because they're not willing to confront their own. Yes. And so when people talk about you, when they, when they gossip about you, when they talk about you behind their back, it's because of their mess that they're dealing with, not you. Sure. So what you got to do is say, okay, well, that's your mess. What you think of me is none of my business. I'm living in my truth. I'm telling you my truth of who I am. Now, whether you choose to judge me or not is up to you. Yeah. You know, but mm -hmm. what I got to do is teach you how to treat me. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm big on that. And that's, that's huge. You do, you teach people how to treat you and uh, I, ooh, man, that right there, that statement right there, that's powerful. And I've, you know, I've had to do that in my own life. And yeah. so I know, you know, what that looks like and what it takes and, and how powerful and impactful to your own life that is. Yes. You know, when you set Absolutely. those boundaries and, and like you said, teach people how to treat you. So that, that's, ooh, that's so powerful. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, let's get on a lighter side. <laughs> a <little bit. laughs> so I posted the question on my Facebook page the other day. Um, what's stopping you from writing your book? You know, and I, I ask that every once in a while just to see what people say. And a lot of a lot of people say um, time. You know, I don't have the time. I can't find the time. You know, when am I going to do it? That sort of thing. But you. Dr. Keith Harley Jr. are one of the busiest people I know, you know, from your speaking, designing clothes, you have your hair clinic, um, you're, you're traveling and just a whole host of other things. So how, tell us like, um, how are you able to do that? How are you, how have you been able to figure that out? And what does the actual writing process look like for you? That's one of the things I teach about in my step up. Uh, mm -hmm. motivational classes and workshops and stuff is when they tell you that the publisher yeah. it's usually an excuse and that's the way they conduct their lives anyway yes wow so when you hear the excuses mm -hmm. that gives you an open window to see what's going on inside their home wow so what i had to do is i had to clean up my mess mm -hmm. so that i became organized yeah. And I became focused on what my dreams, my vision statement, my mission statement, I had to make sure I put everything in alignment to what direction that I was going in. And I no longer focused on other people. Yeah. I focused on, okay, first, and I tell, I say this all the time, you cannot have success around chaos. Oh, so yeah. what I had to do was clean up my stuff. I'm talking mm. about personal business. I had to take off the Band-Aid and heal the wound. And then mm. when you do all of that, that's when you will have the space and the room to create whatever you want if it's your passion. And if it's yeah. your passion, then you can turn your passion into profit. But if you don't take it seriously, yeah. you'll continue to make excuses and complain about the results you don't get because of the work you won't do. Absolutely. Woo, say that. I'm going to have to put this video on retail, retail <laughs> my over and over again. The excuses, people. Let's write these books. No more excuses. You heard Dr. Keith Farley say it. <laughs> yeah, we keep, we keep wow. making excuses, excuses. And then we complain about why we didn't do it yeah. and why I'm still not making this money? Why am I still living in the same place? Why am I still driving the same car? Why am I still with the same man? Why am I still with the same <laughs> woman? Why am I still... You know what the problem is? Yes. Look in the mirror. Stop yes. asking for what you're not. Wow. Ooh, point blank, period. Mm. Fix your stuff. Fix your stuff. Become who you need to be. Mm. And you will attract who and what you deserve and what you desire. Amen to that. Man, you preaching up in here. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay, so wow, we're we're running out of time already. Man. So tell me what what exactly do you want to accomplish by writing Step Up and what impact do you want it to have on the readers? 
I want people to know that where they come from is not where they have to stay. Yeah. We all are brought up differently. And in our communities, especially mine, you know, our ancestors had to deal with some stuff and it's moved down to us in a certain way. And we can make those changes by one, acknowledging it, two, doing the work, and three, to stay committed. You can have change. And Mm -hmm. in this book, it talks about be willing to step up to the matter. Ooh. Be willing to step up to the bad relationship. Be willing to step up to the family members. Be mm. willing to step up to the businesses and where you work. Be willing to step up so you can step out yeah. when it's not for you. Cool. And then when you then step out, you will step right. Mm. And that will get you in a place of loving yourself, doing what you need to do for yourself, being the person that you dream to be, and being unapologetic for making the decision. Mm, yes, I agree. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> so that let me ask you this. So have there been times of, along this writing journey for you that you actually wanted to quit? And if so, what did you tell yourself to overcome that? Oh, that's deep. Here we go again, theory <laughs> Um, Yes, quite okay. a few times. Mm-hmm. Too many times to mention. Wow. But I made a promise. Because of everything that I've been through, I said, God, if you help me help others, mm-hmm. I have a cup and I have a saucer. Mm -hmm. What's in the cup is for me. And I will continue to do the work until it overflows. Mm -hmm. And what drips over into the saucer is for everybody else. And if they drink it all up, (laughs) you got to wait until more stuff comes in my cup. And that's loving me first. Mm-hmm. so that I can put my mask on and then I can love you mm-hmm. and help you put on yours. Yeah, yeah. That's good stuff. <laughs> you keep making me sing over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. awesome. And I wish I, am I be honest with you, I, I know we're over time, but I yeah. wish I would have known that because yeah. I, 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 and most people do it backwards. Yeah. You think if you fill everybody else's cup that it's going to make you better. No. Mm-hmm. And then what that does, and listeners and people who are watching this live, what that does is when you continue to put everybody else first, listen to me, it diminishes your existence wow. and your value will never come to play. Trust me on that. But if you reserve, if you just reverse it, just turn it around and make you first, you will then, your existence will matter and then your value will go up and then the respect will be given and they will then know that you taught them how to treat you. Wow. Yes. Perfect. So last but not least, real quick, (laughs) what advice do you have for those who are on the fence about writing their books and they just haven't taken that leap of faith yet? What what advice do you have for them? If you have a story, tell it. If you want to touch lives, tell it. Book writing is not an easy task, but when you get into it, when you get into it and you begin to think about your purpose and why, Everybody will read about your purpose and why. And that is your way to share and change the world. People still read, whether you realize it or not. People read and they want knowledge and they want to, They sometimes there's a quiet storm, okay? And when people don't want to ask for advice, 
or people want to keep their situation quiet and they want to keep it underneath the surface, they will go to books to mm -hmm. enlighten them or whatever subject it is that they need to have. And so you have that capability to share in that experience of these thousands of book writers and authors and this incredible, incredible publisher that I'm excited and blessed to be with. <laughs> Thank you. She is your vessel. <clears throat> She's your vessel to give you what you need. Just do the work, work through her, and, de and deliver the product. Yeah, that's good. Thank you. Thank You're you. Welcome. So last but not least, tell everyone how they can connect with you, how they can follow your movement, your step up movement, um, you know, to be connected with you. So when the book drops, of course, they're going to hear from me, but they, you know, if they're following you, they're following you. so tell everybody oh, where you got me sweating again. You. Uh -oh. <laughs> yes, that means uh, you got to finish. <laughs> yeah, I tell you. Um, so they can pre-order the book now at Step Up to Level Up. You can get it right now. Um, you can also, um, you can order, we have a journal that we already have that is out there that helps you prepare for the book, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. um, you can connect with us on Facebook. Um, our, like I said, our website is stepuptolevelup.com. Um, I'm on Instagram. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on Snapchat. Can you believe Ooh. it? I'm snapping and chatting. So... <laughs> Wow. <laughs> you can reach me on, uh, did I say LinkedIn? Yeah, I did say LinkedIn and Twitter. So we're all on all social networks. Um, uh, just to also let you all know, I, I got a surprise for Kim. Uh -oh. uh, I'm going to tell publicly that she's not prepared already. Uh, I should have told her, but I wanted to do this publicly. Um, I fly to Dallas on Wednesday. Uh, I'm being interviewed by one of the major radio stations about my book what? Uh, on Wednesday and what? Uh, they know about my publisher and I will be on wow. air for one hour. Wow. Talking to everyone on this pub on red on this local huge radio station. And when I we found out I was going to tell you but I said you know what? Let me <laughs> tell her live. So she can say wow. what? But yeah, it's um, yes. yeah. We're going to be interviewed about the book and the step up movement, and uh, you know, we did the MLK march. Yeah, um, we, we met with the um, the um, uh, I can't remember what her title. The commissioner of Dallas. She wanted to hear about the book. Um, mm -hmm. So we've been and then here in DC, we've been doing some incredible things that you don't even know about, Kim, behind the scenes. Um, wow, getting the foundation set to partner with you to elevate this book to something you've never seen before. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited. Like you're about to make me jump up and run, but I know I'm on camera, right? <laughs> <laughs> I am so excited about every good thing that's happening to you, for you, and through you, Dr. Thank Keith Harley. You are amazing. Um, I've told you before, I've been following you for years. So now to be able to partner with you as your publisher to get this phenomenal book out is just an honor and a pleasure. And I'm just so, so, so excited about it all. And I thank you for taking time out today to talk with me, to talk with our audience and share all of this amazingness. Um, Mary Merle put your website in the chat already so that people can find you. Thank you, Mary. Um, Thank you. And I I'm just so grateful and so blessed for everything and for this to be able to follow your journey um, and see what's next. And wow, you did wow me at the end. You got me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Let me tell you, this is just the beginning. Wow, but let you me tell you right that. now, I wanna, yeah. I'm going to try to see the replay, but see, I got on this, this, this uh, turtleneck and the sweater. Beneath, I got on some pajama pants. When I get done with you, I'm going back to bed and get rid of whatever I got. So I know this right. <laughs> yes, we have too much to do to be down. Yes. Okay. okay. It's all right. So okay. I'm praying for you for your, your speedy recovery because I know you're going to be right back on the road again, as you just said, traveling the road that day and um, stay in the sky. You, I still want you to talk to Southwest about that commercial. I'm not joking. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yes. you look, with step the up is coming to a city near you for sure. Yes. <laughs> absolutely. Wow. So thank you again. Thank you again for being with us. 
and thank you to our viewers. Thank you for joining us for another segment of the LPE Author Chat series. Um, if you haven't already connected to Labu Publishing page, the Facebook page, please go ahead and do that um, because next week we're going to begin our series, a special series, an anthology segment with the authors of Set Apart and Chosen, God Uses Ordinary Women to Do Extraordinary Things. So be sure to connect with us so that you can follow that segment as well. Be sure to uh, connect with Dr. Keith Harley on stepuptolevelup.com. Visit us at www.labupublishing.com and we'll see you guys on the next broadcast. Take care and be Take blessed. Take care, guys. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.